Hi, everybody. In this video, I want to take a look at three important sliders that pertain to setting up your lighting in twin motion. Now, this applies to setting up lighting for interiors that don't have an awful lot of artificial light, but also primarily for exterior renders. For example, commercial properties or homes. Again, scenes where you're not going to have a huge amount of artificial light. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the three sliders. Okay, everybody. So you can see here we have effectively just got our SketchUp test scene, just a simple environment. Back over in Twin Motion, I'm going to pull the camera back. This is kind of what we have very simple environment. And we've got an interior and an exterior to work with here. Okay. Now, the first thing we want to talk about, or really in many ways, what I think the first important slider is, I'm going to click on Ambience. Let me see, I've got my path tracer running. And I'm going to scroll all the way down to Environment and HDRI Environment. Okay, let's turn this on. Now, you'll kind of notice a couple of things about this, and we don't really have time to go into all the details about HDRI lighting environments and what they are and what they do, but you really probably should be using them at this point. Now, what is really important here, though, is the intensity slider. So think of the intensity slider as effectively a multiplier for the brightness of the HDRI. Now, why it's important is this is really good up to a certain point. Let's take a quick look here. I'm going to put my path tracer on to just in a slightly abridged version of medium. And you can see we've no artificial lights in this scene. We just have the one of the default HDRIs, noon clear one. And I can kind of struggle to light my scene a little bit with this. I can use the rotation slider to get some more light into the shot. Definitely. Okay, that looks a little bit better. But overall, it's not really good enough just yet. So you can take the intensity slider and slowly start bringing this upwards to increase the overall brightness within the shot. And you can see around 24, 25, really doing a nice job lighting up this interior. Again, very low path tracer settings. These are my super custom low version, but all in all, that looks pretty nice. If this is your starting or jumping off point for a shot, this is really not bad at all. All right, I'm gonna click on image one and just go back to my stored image. So you can see noon clear. I'm just gonna rotate this back to kind of get a little bit more light back in there. Now, you might be thinking, well, sweet, that's it. That's all I have to do is just really go find a HRI that I like the look of and just rotate the camera. It's basically a better version of the old sky and sun setting. And that's sort of kind of true up to a point. For low sun shots, you can probably get away with just doing that, but Different environments, let's try a different, let's just go to the HRIs, we'll do skies, and we'll do sort of maybe just a low sun cloudy. All right, I'm gonna drag this low sun 09 into here. And this is a really, by the way, this is a, just a beautiful HDRI. I really like this one. I don't know if it's new, but it's really cool. Now, you can see, okay, I can rotate this to my heart's content, but overall, I don't have a sort of really bright sun spot. And it, you can kind of see the other issue. In order to get enough light going on in here, I'm having to crank this really high. So yeah, I'm getting all the blues and the grays and kind of a little bit of pink in the sky, but the intensity is super high. You'll also notice another issue with this is as you turn up the intensity, you can kind of see the sky itself. It becomes excessively bright. So this HRI looks amazing with a really low intensity, but that's not enough to light up your actual scene. Now, the other thing to keep in mind with the intensity slider, and more specifically in this case, kind of the rotation slider, is if you go for a HDRI where the sun is really low on the horizon, but you can see I've got trees and I've got a really a plane of foliage here. Well, that sun, that artificial sort of hotspot in the HDRI is going to get blocked by these. And so you'll run into an issue. But overall, how I sort of instruct my students is pick a HDRI based on the mood you actually want or the time of day or the story that you're trying to tell. Rotate it to get as much light going where you want it to go and then crank the intensity. Now, older versions of Twin Motion, the intensity side went from zero to 20. Roughly like eight to 10 was just the absolute beautiful sweet spot. 
but they have changed the range now from zero to a hundred. But um, I kind of like the old system a lot better, and I kind of wish they would just bring that back. And so you can kind of see here, uh, this is part of the equation. And in many ways, this slider here, the intensity slider for the HRI, really is the first thing that I want to mention. But it's not enough to actually light your entire scenes. So let's bounce on to the next part. So if the HRI brightness slider is, you know, the important piece number one, what is the second one? Well, that's actually to do with the sun. So if the HRI brightness is the really important slider number one, the second one we're going to look at is this, the actual sun intensity. So I'm going to grab, let's grab this, uh, I'm going to do a slightly higher sun. So you're going to do clear and let's do HRI environments, skies. Let's do noon. I'll grab a clear one for this. Okay, noon clear zero one. This looks lovely. Let's let's go with this one. And we'll just drag this into my scene. Okay. And this should hopefully really sort of help uh, sort of clarify what this slider is all about. So I've got my path tracer on and I've got maybe my sun is kind of coming in from a different angle. So I can spin my HRI and again, find the, the kind of look that you're actually going for. Now, the intensity there is 14, but if we scroll all the way up, you'll notice that I, if I adjust this slider, if I turn it off completely, we lose some of the light. So what's happening is we've got a bright spot on the HGRI, which Twin Motion is interpreting as where the sun should be. It is locked to the brightest point. Now this sun is going to add an additional sun effect to our scene. Now uh, you can see, I just cracked it to 14,000. Uh, it's very, very, very strong in the current versions of Twin Motion. Let's put it back to a more reasonable amount. Let's just type in 50. Okay, there we go. And so what you can do with this is find a HRI that you like that might not give enough light in the scene, even if you crank it, the, you know, rotate it the right way and you crank the intensity, you're trying to balance between the intensity of the overall sky and brightness. So this will allow you to add more brightness in. Think of it as just a magic, you know, flashlight in the sky, because that's effectively what it is. And it's going to be shooting really sort of orange light into your actual scene. Now, current version of Twin Motion has gotten a little clunkier to work with as the values have gone from zero up to some sort of nonsensically high number. But if you start in like increments of five, 10, 15, 20, you should get a pretty nice result. One of the benefits of this is you can combine this artificial, more traditional sun with the some of the different HRIs that really aren't bright enough to light an outside scene on their own. So for example, let's grab one of these like cloudy ones. We'll go uh, low sun and we'll do this overcast. And again, there's some really just, I mean, just absolutely lovely HRIs in Twin Motion. I think they're really very comparable to Lumion's. I'm going to drag this little guy out. All right, beautiful. And you can see we can kind of rotate this, but there it is. Little, if I move this a little bit to the right, you can see that extra sun right there. Now, I want to drop the intensity of this because I actually want to see more of the sky. So maybe we bring this down to like one. And you'll see I'm getting that sky and you can kind of just see it right up there on the camera. But in order to get more light in the scene, I am going to have to add more sunlight. Let's take this up to 300 and there we go. This is a wonderful way to combine the HRIs with artificial light. And I think the end result is pretty cool looking. Now, tied to the sun intensity, there's two more sliders I want to talk about briefly before I talk about the last one. The sun size is still active in, in Twin Motion. Uh, so this is kind of a, a little bit of a throwback. If you're not using area lights to light your scene, you can use the sun size to affect the softness of shadows within your scene. So for example, sun size of zero, it's obviously not doing anything, but let's, let's zoom in. And I'm gonna look really closely at this really lovely um, outdoor fire model. Okay, turn the path tracer on. And if I put the sun size really low, you'll notice how sharp the shadows actually are. But if I crank this all the way, you can actually see in the preview mode just how it's interpreting that. So if you're trying to get very soft, beautifully sort of diffuse shadows 
and and most shadows generally in real life are not like you know CG sharp or sort of ideals and sharp. They you know they actually do tend to be softer and more diffuse. Uh, strictly speaking, they should be a little bit either blue or or orange depending on the time of day. But either way, this is just a beautiful slider that will allow you to kind of tweak that. Now, tied to this is one more thing, which is the actual ambience. So you can see I've got my sun intensity coming in. My shadows are beautifully soft, great. The ambient slider will, let's pop on into the inside really quickly and I'll show you this. Okay, I'm gonna turn my render on for this. Now this is using the older sky, but this will kind of like, this will still work add a little bit more sun intensity just to make this bit more clearer for everybody. So let's just put this to 35. Now the ambient sliders is, you know, not one of the three that I'm really focusing on. And it's sort of one of these like forgotten sliders for a lot of twin motion users. But the ambient is just going to really kind of determine the ambient light in your scene. It's, um, it's a little bit like hyper light in Lumion. It's just gonna lighten everything up and kind of put light back into the corners. So you can see I've got my path tracer render done here. I've got my really soft sun and the ambient light just allows you to really just lighten up. We take it all the way to the right, just the overall ambience. Now, I can't think of a better way to describe it. It's just if you want more light in the nooks and crannies and the corners, this is what you'll wanna do. Now. With that being said, this brings us to the third of what I think are really the most essential sliders and the most important sliders and settings when working for lighting and twin motion. Now, this is uh, particularly because my, my students recently just finished up their first exterior, like commercial render. And uh, it was a really great opportunity just to, to kind of play around with different settings and see what will happen. And the next one that I'm gonna talk about is the actual exposure value. Now, if you're using the newer versions of Twin Motion, this has actually changed. It's not under the camera tabs. It used to be only under the environment. Uh, I guess it makes a bit more sense to put it under the camera. Okay, let's go back to this outdoor shot that we have here. We've got our sun intensity of 300. I'm gonna drop the sun size, or, uh, put it halfway between sharp. Our overall ambient is fine. And we really like the HRI we've picked. We've got this kind of nice, almost like pre or post thunderstorm kind of atmosphere. Now, the next thing that you'll want to do, and by the way, I'm talking about this like in terms of one, two, three. In, in reality, you're going to move between these three sliders, to my mind, sort of organically. You can start with the HDRI and then add the song and then do the exposure. But in reality, you're, you're probably going to be moving between all three simultaneously. Or at least you will be if you're, you know, kind of a messy worker like me. Okay. Third thing we want to talk about is the exposure. Now, by default, Twin Motion will do this. It will have auto exposure on. Now, I'm going to ignore the local exposure sliders. That's maybe another video. But my thing is, I would rather not have Twin Motion do this. So, for example, if we bounce in here, and again, we turn the path tracer back on, and we turn auto exposure back on, we're sort of effectively undercutting the lighting that we've established. We're asking Twin Motion to sort of balance out the overall lights and darks, which might not actually be what you want. So what I would suggest doing is if you're going to follow a simple kind of workflow, pick the HDRI, rotate it, adjust the brightness, add sun, change the sun settings, change the ambient, and then bounce back here to the auto exposure. Now, I actually quite like the look of this image, but you can see the whites are really blown out over here. Turn off the auto exposure, and then you, as the user, go in here and just manually adjust this. All right. And so we look at the outside tab. This is this one in particular, I think you'll really notice. So again, turn off auto exposure. It'll, you know, by default, the exposure of zero tends to be pretty dark in Twin Motion. It's actually quite pronouncedly dark. But, you know, we've got kind of things set up the way you want. Let's do this. Let's just manually raise this up. And you can see we're keeping the same sky, just beautifully set. We've got that extra sunlight coming in, but we're determining the overall brightness, how much light is entering sort of the camera lens. Now, uh, 
I said I wasn't going to do this, but whatever. Local exposure. Um, this seems to be popping up a lot on the newer versions of Twinmotion and Lumion and D5. Really, really cool. Uh, it'll really just enable you to kind of do things like here, highlight reduction, really get rid of the hot spots or bright spots in the image. And then shadow boost kind of does the opposite. Like, do you want to add or reduce the shadows? It's quite handy for fine tuning, uh, especially if you're not doing any post production. I don't mean to Photoshop. Uh, with that being said, uh, that's all I got for today. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there for today. You made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate all the, the subscribers and all the people who've commented and even just, you know, seeing the watch hours go up. Thank you so, so much. And uh, hopefully this deep dive into those two settings will really help you just set up your lighting. All right. See you in the next video. Cheers.